What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you everything you need to know about wall assemblies in Revit. So I thought it would be cool to create this video where I'm going to be explaining how can you create a wall assembly, a vertical wall assembly and also uh, all of the wall layers and just to explain in depth how everything works, uh, how can you create layers, what all of those little settings means, mean, uh, what uh, what does the structure, what does the uh, those membrane layers, the finish layers, uh, all of that and then also all of the little tools where you can kind of split some of the layers, add uh, some uh, sweeps, add reveals, things like that and how can you create one of those complex walls uh, like the one that comes uh, with Revit that's, uh, that's uh, kind of cool, it has a lot of these details and a lot of elements so I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to recreate something like that so you can understand the wall type uh, assembly uh, in depth for Revit. Okay, but before I get into that tutorial, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial and uh, make sure to subscribe just because I, I, I make uh, useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials and also I make one advanced Balkan Architect course, which is over one hour long. Now, all of these courses, over 45 hours of content, can be found on my Patreon. Uh, first, the link in the description. So, if you're interested in some advanced long form uh, uh, courses on Revit, check it out. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into the tutorial. So we're going to be starting this project off from scratch. So as you can see here, I am in the Revit start page. Now I'm going to go here to models, go to new, and then let's go ahead here and choose the uh, architectural template. I'm going to click OK, and now Revit will start up. Now for the project units, I tend to change them uh, immediately just because uh, the project units are going to affect the units that you're going to be using uh, in order to input wall dimensions, wall layer dimensions, and all of those. So I just tend to go here to the manage tab and then go to the project units dialog. Alternatively, you can use the UN shorter shortcut to save some time. And then let me just change the length uh, units from uh, millimeters into centimeters. Now I'm just going to click OK. Uh, and we're uh, finished with that. Now let's go back here to the architecture tab and now what I'm going to be doing is just starting off a new wall command and then uh, let me choose one of the more interesting walls. Let's go with the maybe the uh, brick on uh, metal stud, brick uh, and block on metal stud. So let's just create one wall segment over here get the escape key a couple of times just to exit out of the command and then let's just go into the default 3D view to see what we have created and this is what that looks like. Now let's start off by exploring this wall that we have created. So as you can see it's quite an interesting wall. Here on top we have this little cap uh, on top of the wall then just below that we have a row of vertical bricks so it's like an alternate brick pattern and those actually stick out just a little bit if I zoom in over here then moving down we have uh, three of these ridges or kind of voids inside of the uh, wall then uh, here on the bottom as you can see we have a totally different material as finish uh, on the bottom and uh, and then it turns into brick so it goes from block and then it turns into brick and between that we have this little uh, split uh, kind of a uh, split sweep that goes uh, along the the length of the wall that kind of acts as a uh, as a maybe boundary between these two materials. Uh, now keep something in mind uh, when we've created this uh, wall it was a regular basic wall now it's not a stacked wall here we have an option to create a stacked wall that means stacking one wall on top of the other but here we don't have that so how do we create these different materials and how can we recreate this very very complex uh, complex wall so let's get into that. So what I'm going to do now is just select this wall and then let's just turn it into a simple wall, something like the generic 200 uh, millimeter wall. And I'm going to start off with this basic generic wall. So I'm going to select the wall and then let's go here into uh, edit type. Now, once we go into edit type, the first thing that I always suggest you do is duplicate the layers so or duplicate the families so you don't uh, mess up the original family. So I'm going to call this 
on my wall. Click OK. There we go. Now, in order to edit this wall, let's go here into structure and then click into edit, of course. Now, here we have these two lines that uh, consist out of, that are called uh, the core boundary. Now, what this basically means is anything that's between these two lines is supposed to be the structural part of the wall. So the, the thing that's holding the wall in place. So this may be brick, this may be uh, concrete. Uh, it's the structural part of the wall. So that's what you want to have in the middle of the wall. So uh, here the function. So the first field in this or the first uh, column in this little table is dedicated to function. So here the main one is uh, or the original one in the middle is set to structure and that's exactly what we want. Now you can open this uh, drop menu just to see what else do we have here but for now let's just keep it at structure. Uh, here we have the option to set up the material so I can just go ahead and change that. Let's type in concrete and then we can use the cast in place gray concrete and for the thickness we can just leave it at 20 uh, centimeters. Okay, so once we have this first material in place, let's see how can we add additional materials. So the first thing that you should keep in mind is the interior and the exterior side of the wall. So uh, here for the layers, as you can see, it says layers. And then here on top, it says exterior. And then here it says interior side. Uh, now, why are these so um, <laughs> offset? I have no idea, uh, but you get the point. So if you want to add a layer on the outside of the building, uh, you would just click here on this core boundary. And when you click insert, it's going to add another layer on top. And then if you want to add a layer on the inside of the building, you would select the bottom layer, hit insert. Now it will create a layer that's uh, here inside of the core boundary. So you do have to click the down button to move it down. And now it's outside of the core boundary and it's on the inside of the building. Now let's start off uh, with uh, the uh, the outside of the building and then we're going to move to the inside of the building or the interior side. So for the exterior side, the second layer that we're going to be editing that may be, I don't know, let's add some sort of a, uh, maybe some sort of a uh, insulation layer or let's start with substrate actually. So I'm just going to select the substrate and then here we can add some plywood or something like that. Okay, let's add plywood sheeting, maybe two centimeters. And on top of that, we're going to be adding some uh, insulation. So I'm just going to select that layer and then insert another one that's going to be on the outside of the building. Now here for function, I'm going to go with the thermal or air layer. So this can either be a thermal layer or an air layer. In this case, it's a thermal layer. So let's add that one. Let's say something like 15 centimeters. And for the material, let's search for insulation. So we have this rigid insulation or exterior insulation. Let's go with the exterior ex insulation. Okay. Uh, the next uh, layer that I want to add is going to be a membrane layer. So if I just hit here uh, insert, uh, you will see that here for function, I can insert a membrane layer. Now this is quite a different layer. So membrane layers are layers that have thickness of zero. Now uh, here for the thickness, you uh, for the membrane layer, you want to leave this blank. Now uh, you might be tempted to add a number here. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, like three millimeters or something like that, but don't leave this blank. If you add a membrane layer uh, with a thickness, you're going to get an error message. Now here for the, uh, for the material, let's search. And I'm going to go with the air uh, in, filtration barrier. So select that one, click OK. And then let's add yet another layer on the outside. And that can be our finish layer. So I can just select this, go to insert, and then maybe we can add some sort of uh, bricks on the outside as uh, I don't know, like for cosmetic purposes. So here for the structure, I'm going to go with finish, but go with finish one. Now you will notice that you have finish one and finish two. And now finish one is referring to the finishing finish layers that are on the exterior side. And then finish two is referring to the uh, finish layers that are on the interior side. So let's go, let's just go with finish one. And now let's add, I don't know, like six centimeters of brick. And then here, let's search for brick. I don't know, I'm just going to go with common, click OK. 
There we go. Now let's just change that uh, interior layer. So I'm just going to select it uh, here first for the function. We're going to go with finish two, as I said, just because this is on the interior side. Uh, for the material, let's go with some sort of a gypsum wallboard. So I'm just going to type in gypsum wallboard. There we go. Click OK. And then let's add a thickness of, I don't know, something like uh, one centimeter. Hit enter and there we go. So now we have a structure for our uh, for our wall. Now once we have done this, uh, you can uh, add a bit more information for this structure. Now as you remember here uh, on that original wall, we had a wall that had a different finish uh, on the bottom uh, where we had those blocks and then a different one on top where we had some bricks. So let's see how can we do something like that with this wall. I'm just going to select the whole menu and move it off to the side a little bit, maybe compress it a little bit. And then we here we have this preview option. Now keep in mind that here we have some modify vertical structure tools that are all grayed out. Now as soon as I open this menu up and then change it from a plan view uh, in a section view. So now we have a section preview over here and if you zoom in you can see all of the layers. Now you will see that all of these tools uh, kind of highlight or uh, they are no longer uh, half tone so they are now usable or grayed out. So here let's say we want to make a change. So for example for this interior layer uh, over here what we want to do is to split it in half and we want to have the bottom part of this layer be some sort of a paint uh, or maybe tile or yeah, I guess tile would work. So uh, let's say it's a wall for the kitchen or for the bathroom and you want to have a tile layer that's, that's going up to, I don't know, like one meter and then everything above should be just gypsum wallboard. Well, for that, you can use some of these tools. So let's go here to the split uh, region tool. So just like that. Now I'm just going to zoom in over here and as you can see, when I come close to the layer, I'm going to get this little dimension line which allows me to make a cut or a split at a certain height. Now keep in mind that this is uh, this is very difficult to do. For some uh, reason it's uh, kind of buggy and it, it doesn't work as well as uh, I, I was hoping for. Uh, so just bear with me. So let's try to make a cut and there we go. Uh, okay, I got it for the first time. And uh, here, uh, as you can see on this side, here the thickness changed to variable. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, click here on our finish two, insert a new layer and then for this layer let's call it finish two as well and for the uh, for for the material I'm going to go with some sort of a tile material. So let's go here let's try just ceramic tile there we go. Now I'm going to select this material and then go uh, go ahead and use the assign layers tool and then I'm just going to try to pick this out there we go. And as you can see, now it got the same thickness as the layer below. And as you can see, the hatch here, uh, the hatch pattern has changed. Now, if I just click OK, uh, hit apply, OK. Now you can see that here on the bottom, we have those tiles. And then on top, we have just regular gypsum wallboard. And on the other side, we have that uh, brick, uh, just brick finish. So that's how you can split these uh, layers in half and add those uh, and basically add a different material. Uh, moving on, let's see how, how can we do the rest of these modifications. So let me go back here, select the layer, go into edit type. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is go back into edit here and then we have the options to add sweeps. Now I'm just going to click there on sweeps and as you can see it opens up the wall sweeps uh, dialog. It works kind of the same way you get a new table and here you can uh, add a new sweep. Now here for the profile uh, you will have just uh, a few options. So these are all of the profiles that are loaded in your project and keep in mind not all of these are sweep profiles. So for example this uh, first profile over here, uh, the C-shape profile, because that is a steel profile but the rest of these can be used. So the cap precast, this is referring to that cap on top. Uh, so uh, as, as, as far as the width is concerned you should probably take a look at the width of your wall. So here if I just move this down 
Here you will see that we have a total thickness parameter on top that basically calculates all of these layers here. So as you can see it's 44 centimeters so we can add a uh, cap uh, that is something larger than that. Now you can go with 450 millimeters but I think it's uh, nice to have a, a, a little bit of an overhang so I'm just going to go with the 600 millimeter one and then to place it on top uh, here uh, you have to go and measure from and instead of base go with the top and then here we can add the material uh, let's just go with the gypsum wall board just to make it white hit apply and as you can see it appears here on top now you can play around a little bit with it uh, you can change the offset maybe type in five centimeters hit apply now as you can see it's kind of centered maybe six apply okay there we go you have the option to flip it around so if i apply that it will look like this apply uh, and uh, so you do have options uh, like that you also have the option for a setback and uh, something else but for now let's just leave it as is now the cuttable option is referring to the fact that uh, you can basically place doors that would uh, basically cut this profile in half. Okay, moving on, let's add one more here uh, uh, where we have uh, on the bottom maybe. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a new one. Now this one will be, let's see, so we have a wall sweep brick. Let's go with two bricks and for the material, of course, let's go with brick. And I'm just going to go with the soldier course uh, uh, distance from base and then for the distance let's go with 100 centimeters and then uh, let's keep it on the exterior side hit apply as you can see it brings it up over here now you can give it a little bit of an offset I'm not going to so I'm just going to leave it as is uh, or maybe a little bit let's try minus three centimeters hit apply as you can see now it's kind of embedded a little bit into the bricks so let's try minus six okay now if I zoom in over here okay it's kind of lying flat with this layer I actually like that so I'm just going to leave it as is and then also we can just go ahead and add some reveals so reveals are basically some voids that you saw in that wall so for those you would just go here into oops uh, you'd go into add and then uh, you can just go with a simple one brick reveal a measure from let's measure from top and then the distance can be 50 centimeters let's hit apply now as you can see it placed it here on top that's why we got an error message so we should actually type in minus 50 and then let's hit apply okay so there it is uh, maybe give it an offset of minus three centimeters hit apply oops let's try plus three hit apply there we go that's exactly what we want and as you can see now it's cutting into the wall and that's exactly what we want to have maybe it's cutting a bit too much so we can go back to reveals Let's set this to zero, hit apply. There we go, I think this looks good enough. Now keep in mind that these lines here, they won't, won't appear once we save this. So when, once I click OK, apply, OK. And here, if I just orbit around on the outside, here you can see those bricks. And then on top here, we have that little uh, void opening. And on top we have our cap. So that's what our wall looks like now. So that's how you can edit the uh, vertical structure of the wall without using stacked walls. Okay, so that is going to conclude this uh, tutorial on a vertical wall assembly in Revit. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Make sure to like and share this video. If you want to download the project files or if you want to get access to any of my advanced courses, check out my Patreon first link in the description. Okay, so that concludes this week's tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll be back with a new tutorial in a couple of days. Have a nice day.